Yeah, yeah, we're just leaving Macedonia now. Yeah, no, it was a good win. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw Legia lost as well, so that means we're through the group. So that's nice, yeah. Yeah, exactly. How's the B team looking for tomorrow's game? Favre's injured. Perfect. Well, I guess we're not playing with wingers then. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome to Season 9, Episode 8 here at H&W Welders on the Impossible Dream. And today we've got Balena Millard in the league and then Legia Warsaw in Europe. And, uh, well, we're through the group. I can uh, give you that spoiler. And this is a chance for us to uh, potentially really nail down the chance to be top of it as well. Now, the big news since last episode is unfortunately an injury. Uh, we saw that we lost Andy Lyons to a broken leg, which was devastating. Not quite as devastating, but Leo Favre uh, is out for about a month. Maybe he'll come back on the nearest side to two weeks there, which would be good. But sprained ankle ligaments for him. Um, he's just started to really fit in and and, and look like he's you know a, a useful part of the team. So it's an annoying time as much as anything else for the injury to happen. Um, but we'll get by as best we can and uh, we'll deal with it. But uh, yeah, Leo Favre or Fev. We're just going to go with Fevra because I kind of that's what it is in my head now. Uh, he is going to be missing for at least this episode. Hopefully not much longer than that. Now, there is three games to catch you up on since last episode where we, of course, uh, smashed Rabbit Nicky to all but secure ourselves a progress into the knockout rounds of the Europa Conference League. The first game to catch you up on is in the league against Coleraine. So let's go see how we did. Pogbo gave us a first half lead. And McGreevy picked out McDade's run to make it 2-0 moments later. Before rolls are reversed for McGreevy to get his first Welders goal. And Hall cross for Diora to round off the scoring in the second half. So a comfortable win this one. We were never in really any threat of losing it. We went in head early and uh, never really looked back. That XG track is wrong. Um, why has it done that? Anyway, score's right, but the track is wrong. The goals weren't there. They were sort of later in the first half. But either way, uh, they sort of all came around at once. And then we were never in any real danger after that. So good performance from us. Very, very happy to see it. And uh, next up, it was Dungannon. I can't remember running. It's Dungannon, I think, in the league. The only goal came early when Rory King played in Sean Simpson. So I feel like we're getting back to the days of getting done Gennon, but uh, it was a good performance from us. We did enough to win. It was a really nice goal, that little first-time layoff pass from Rory King. Absolutely sublime. Uh, and Simpson took his chance, and that was it. There wasn't too much else that happened in the game, to be honest. So you can see here we tried Armstrong in that deeper role. I was anxious to try him in, and he did a good job. Um, so that was that was good. It gives us options. But uh, yeah, a good, solid win against a very tough to beat uh, Dungan and Sider. Because I think it was nil-nil when we played them opening game of the season, wasn't it? Final game to catch you up on was in Europe again. It was against Rabbit Nicky. Now, of course, we were comfortable in the end against them at home. Um, let's see how things went in Macedonia. We took the lead when Rory King picked out McDade. And went two up when Fitzpatrick found King at the back post. Rabbit Nicky pulled one back. But Simpson slipped in McDay to restore our lead before half time. Before McGreevy found Fitzpatrick's run to secure the points. So there we go, we're just too good for them. Uh, it was a bit of a rotated side. Bain, the young right back, came in for this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a strong side without being our strongest side. And yeah, we were just too good. You can see we had two goals ruled out as well. And there's a few nervous moments when they got back to 2-1. But obviously, we, we scored quickly after that and restored our lead. And it was fine. So that means if we go and have a quick look at what everything has happened here in the group stage, we are through. We are guaranteed to get through, which is fantastic. We play Legia Warsaw today. If we were to win that, uh, it would mean basically that... Genk would have to beat us by more than we beat them. Otherwise, we would be topped. So and there's always a chance Rabbit Nicky could take a point off them, but I doubt that. And the league table, we are second. Um, only a point off Linfield. We seem to have refound our form, refound our feet, which is promising. Um, but yeah, it, is, it kind of is what it is. Now, there have been some questions regarding Northern Ireland's coefficients. 
So I thought we'd have a quick look at this. Now we can see here we're down here in 20th. Uh, now obviously we're having a, or we, and we are hopefully going to continue to have a good season in Europe. That means next season, as things stand, we have 27 points. Now I make it, we would be just behind Croatia still, but obviously there's a chance that we could go ahead of them. Uh, but we would be looking to overtake Turkey as well as Denmark and Romania. So that's up three spots, which would put us in 17th. If we could get Turkey, uh, get uh, Croatia as well, that would be 16th. That would mean essentially replacing Denmark. Now, if we go and have a quick look at qualification places, 15th uh, for Romania is where that's where you start getting a second Champions League spot. So we're not that far away, coefficient points wise, from from getting a second Champions League spot. Now, that's that's a big risk because a it could mean that both Linfield and Lahn were to get into the Champions League, and that gives them all that more money and would make them all that more difficult to catch. But if we could sneak second place, that gives us a chance to get into that uh, that chair. Now, we're not going to get there yet because we'd have to qualify and beat some very good teams to get there. But it just goes to show we're not too far away, although it's five places in the table. It's only we're only talking one, two coefficient points. So it's it's all to play for in Europe. And we have a quick look at us as a club. We're down here right now in 183rd. Uh, if we go across here, we have eight points already. But we've got 18.5 points already for this year sort of in the bag. If we go up to where 18.5 points would get you, um, where do we start to get the 18s regularly? 18.5. So we'd be looking at here somewhere just round about the top 100, it looks like. 18.5, 101st. So, and then above that, there's not too much. Um, too much. Uh, most of those other country, uh, teams there have got us covered. So we'd be looking at somewhere around just outside the top 100. If uh, I mean, if it stopped now, and hopefully we're going to continue to do well and get more points here. So that's a bit of an update on the coefficient side of things. So let's have a look and see what we're doing here against Berlin and Millard. And um, we are expecting a 4-4-2 from them. Now, because they've got the two up top, it does kind of force our hand a little bit, given the injury to Fevre as well. So this is how we're going to play. So it's Dejitter in goal. It's Davenport, Simpson, and Gribben as the back three. Hall down the right. McCulloch down the left. Napoleon and McQuaid in midfield. Armstrong in behind. Cargbo and Thomas get to start in this one. Um... He's a good player. We shouldn't be worried about playing him. He's a good player. Uh, we have got a little bit of fatigue players still from that game in Macedonia, which happened on the Thursday. This is the Saturday. Uh, so it's very much a, a bit of a rotated side from that as well. So that explains maybe why some players aren't playing that you'd expect to see. But anyway, let's get out there and see what we can do. Okay, so we can see the lineups here. Is there any names I recognize? There's probably names that are there that are formerly of us that I just don't recognize, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, and what should we say to this? Were the favourites go out there leave to know out uh impress me? Let's just take a bit of pressure off. We've got an aggressive Napoleon. Why is he so aggressive or oh, apprehensive? Why is he apprehensive? He, I thought he was full of confidence. Alright, and here we go. I mean a little bit like the Crusaders game last episode. This is the sort of game we have to win. Now we do have an international break coming up after this game, so that is good. It's gonna give for the most part the squad a chance to recover. Um which is, to be honest, why there's probably a lot of players here that have backed up for this one that wouldn't maybe have done so if we had uh, or didn't have that free week in between. So that is good. Cargbo's being called up again, so he's off to uh, to represent Trinidad. No, who, where's he? Trinidad and Tobago. Sierra Leone, even. Uh, and then there's a couple of youngsters. Armstrong is one of them. Armstrong's hit the post. Um, yeah, a couple of youngsters that are in sort of youth Northern Irish sides, but no one's, no one's got caught up to the senior squad as of yet. Napoleon with a corner. Can Cargbo get his head on that? He can, but it's over the bar. At least we're seeing highlights this time in the league. That is, that's an improvement on the Crusaders game, isn't it? They are more of a Route 1 style side. So, did we do chance conversion training? I'm sure I did. You wouldn't know it looking at this, would you? Let's try a demand more, perhaps, if we can. We, yeah, I'm gonna. I might need to have a quick think about the way we're doing team talks here. Maybe we need to start uh, expecting results a little bit more. We had the same thing. If you're watching the Sheffield Wednesday series, didn't we? When we were just beginning to become a, a force in the league in that of exactly what to say. I mean, he's still to a point struggle with it. Oh, Cargbo's gone down now. It better not be a dive, Cargbo. Who <laughs> helped you off? I'm assuming, yeah, he's been holed down. Armstrong to take the penalty kick. And this would be a nice way to break them down. If we can get there, we can't. Armstrong. Straight at the goalkeeper, really. Napoleon's there. Back to Armstrong. Cross in. Cargbo's there. And his header is at the goalkeeper as well. Um, we look a nervous side, don't we? What do we say to that at halftime? 
Um, I'm going to say, unlucky, I didn't really get the, the uh, what I was looking for from them, did it? Let's pump our fists, say we have faith in them. But this has all the hallmarks of another game that's not going to quite manage to go our way, doesn't it? Thomas is looking nervous. We haven't really seen anything from Thomas, have we? All right, what we might do, they do tend to defend narrow. So if we look for the overlaps, that might, that might serve as well. And we've got a corner to defend. Now, the last thing we want to do, having really struggled, is that. And Jitter has come out there, and he's just stood there. Um, all right. Well, this is not working. We're going to... Do I have the option to switch to wingers? Um, at least stick your hand up, Jitter. What are you doing there, man? Oh, that's so annoying. All right. Uh, we have King. We have Curry. That's good enough for me. So... Let's make these changes. Okay, so we have made changes. We've gone kind of uh, an attacking 4-4-2. So off have come uh, Simpson, the centre-back. Is he the centre-back I wanted to take off? Probably not. I would rather take off Gribben, I think. So it'll be Gribben and Thomas that have uh, that have come off. On comes, uh, on comes McDade and on comes King. Uh, we're going to use Armstrong as a winger out there. He should be able to do it. And then it means we can have Napoleon as an advanced playmaker and McQuaid. I wonder if we use you as a deep-lying playmaker, actually. Try and get a little bit of control in the middle of the park there. Um, we need to be just so much better. It's these sorts of games that are letting us down right now. Let's try berating. I wonder if that'll get us going. Um, this is becoming a serious problem, isn't it? What do we do? What do we do? Let's try exploit the flanks. Let's just get crosses in towards Cargbo and McDade, please. Uh, no pressure. Apprehensive, nervous. That hasn't worked. We're going to lose this game, aren't we? And it, it feels like there's nothing we can do about it. Which, I mean, in a way isn't true, but it, it kind of feels like it is. I don't know that left back's our problem, but let's get Robin on. Because uh, McCulloch's having a poor game. We have a highlight. Robin. Is he going to make all the difference? McQuaid gets the cross in. It's Cargbo. He's offside. Simpson's there. And McCargbo was definitely offside, wasn't he? Yeah, they're both offside. Not quite sure why Simpson's playing as a winger. We have another highlight. Why is Simpson playing as a winger? Well, Simpson is a winger and King is a, as a centre-back. McDade is there. Can McDade rescue us? No, he cannot. And I've kind of stuffed up there a little bit, haven't I? King is a centre-back. I mean, that wasn't the problem, was it? We missed a penalty. We were nervous throughout. And we just never recovered. Um, yeah. I mean, we didn't deserve to lose it. If we're looking for a silver lining, Lan have dropped points as well, which is almost more frustrating because we really could have, should have kicked clear. That's at home as well. That's a really, really frustrating one. Look at the yellow card. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I mean, we've missed a penalty. I mean, Jitter, who's looked so good for us, has inexplicably come charging out and just, uh, oh, hello, and just, I don't know, I didn't even know what he was trying to do. and. Anyway, guys, that's we're, we're, we're just dropping stupid points in the league, and it's going to cost us. It's going to cost us maybe a top two finish, um, if not a title challenge. But anyway, guys, we'll be back for Europe. We're playing Legia Warsaw. We, are we, we're hosting them, I think, aren't we? Are they coming to us? Um, I mean, given what happened there, that's maybe not a good thing. But I'll see you after the international break. We've got a little bit of a gap here. All right, welcome back. Now, with an apology for that horrible performance against Berlin and Malad. We've made a signing. Hopefully, this will make it up for you. Um, a star player, Kyle Fisher, 19-year-old winger. He is from Cardiff Met Uni in Wales. Uh, now, I'm hoping we've got another bus and brew on our hands here. Two and a half grand a week as a star player is a lot of money, for, and it's a little bit of a risk, if I'm honest. I will show you in just a second. I did put the minimum release fee in, two and a half million, so hopefully that won't be triggered. Uh, well, hopefully it will be triggered, actually. But this is what we've got here. You can see there, we haven't, he's on trial with us right now. We haven't got a full view of him, but because he is uh, at Cardiff Met Uni, he's obviously only amateur, so we could uh, sort of get him for free. 
The scouts really, really like him. Physically, he looks to be quite good. We can see dribbling and crossing is good. Bravery, no matter what it is there, is going to be good. Good determination as well. Vision is good. Passing is okay. Um, technique is good. What I don't particularly love is he's, it's another left footer on the right. We need more right footers. But I do think potentially there's a very good player there for us. And I wanted to just go in and get him signed. He's been playing since he must have been, what, 12 when he started playing at Cardiff Met Uni. But he's been playing in the Welsh Premier League and he's been playing well. So between that, the scouts loving him, and what we can see looking quite good, I, I was, I'm relatively comfortable in making the signing. I don't love the two and a half grand a week, if I'm completely honest, but that is what it is. Um, so we'll just uh, kind of hope that he develops for us. Now, there's been some other news. Now, in terms of contracts, we've offered a new one to Jordan McGreevy. Now, he now has that minimum release fee again, two and a half million. So if the likes of, of Lionel Linfield take interest in him, um, well, hopefully anyway, the chairman's not going to sell him for less than what we want to. Um, he's looking as so though he's quite a good player. And the other player that we've got a minimum release fee in their contract is Aaron McDade. Again, a good young Northern Irish player. I figure he's probably at risk of Linfield or Lahn saying we like the looks of him. So again, two and a half million release fee. It's one of those, if we get that much for them, we'll take it. Uh, and hopefully, as I said, it'll be enough to sort of persuade the chairman not to just sell for the sake of it. So he has got his uh, his release fee in there as well. Now, the bad news is we go to the medical center is we've had an absolute just rush on injuries. Uh, we have had the international break, but Edgar, which is disappointing, four to five weeks, knee tendonitis. Now, he's been a little bit hit and miss this season, but he is, generally speaking, a very good defender for us. He just lacks pace, obviously, but he's strong in the air, good positioning. Uh, so that's a little bit of a blow. Hopefully, it won't set his career back too far for us. Um, the other players that have been injured, O'Hare, which isn't uh, was two, uh, another two weeks there, groin strain. He's just starting to come along nicely. He's a good defensive midfield option for us. So that's a bit of a blow. Uh, we can see here that Curry, Robin, um, Fevra, Curtis Coyle, who's one of the young centre-backs, they're all missing this game uh, with injuries. And Fred Simpson had an injury as well, though he has thankfully come back just in time to be able to feature. So we had an international break and it was, it was quite... Um, yeah, quite a busy one. So let's have a look and see what we're doing here against, uh, against who are we playing? Leggy or Warsaw. We're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation from them. And this is a team we're sending out. We're going to go with wingers and have a bit of a crack at them. It's Jajida in goal. It's McCulloch, Davenport, Simpson, and Hall as the back uh, back four. Armstrong as a deep line playmaker, so a different role for him. Let's hope he shines in that role. Uh, he and McGreevy will be in midfield. It'll be King, Napoleon moving forward, and Fitzpatrick. McDade goes up top. A bench of Roger, Gribben, Bain, the backup right back. Uh, DeRosa, McQuaid, Simpson, and Cargbo, of course. Let's get out there. Okay, so we can see the lineups there. Aiden, he's Australian, I think. Hirschstick. I think he's Australian. Anyway, so we could have an, a, an Australian off at number 10. Uh, looks like they're a little bit more defensively minded than we were maybe expecting from them. Uh, we've got nothing to lose if we're capable of. Let's go with that. Um... Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a situation with Team Talks where there could be quite a difference between the league and in Europe. So hopefully... Um, yeah, hopefully we'll sort of walk that tight rope and learn quickly. But it's not the first time, is it, in the league that we've seen disappointing performances from us. In games that really, I mean, we, we not only sh we, do we need to win, we should be winning. At home to Bellingham Millard, that is a poor, poor result. Um, but let's not dwell on it. Napoleon's done okay there, but he can't quite keep possession having got a foot in. And let's see where we go from here. Now, we have qualified from the group, so that... That much is, is done and dusted. We don't have to worry about getting out of the group. This is purely now for top spot. And the thing is, I mean, even if we lose this, we'll still have the head-to-head -head over Gank and we'll go to their place on the final game day and uh, see, you know, you know, have a bit of a shootout for top of the group. So there's not, in that sense, too much riding on the game. But obviously, if we win here, it puts us in a fantastic position to top the group going in uh, to that final game. Now, of course... Topping the group isn't key. Oh, Rory King. That is stunning. And the cross from Ray Fitzpatrick as well. We're 1-0 up. Why can't we do that in the league? Um, just a stunning cross, isn't it? Fitzpatrick, he's he's not had a he's not had a great season in that he's been inconsistent this year, but when he does that, he's just a stunning winger. Um, so that's really, really good. But yeah, it's, it's the performances in the league that we need to just get more consistent with. Um, 
And I, I'm convinced that it's team talks because we just looked nervous and apprehensive through that. We missed penalties. We had chances. We just weren't taking them. So I think it's uh, I think it's a mentality issue, and that's that's I think down to me and team talks and what I'm saying in the press conferences before the games, um, and then in in the team talks as well. And McDade is in, and McDade that's just another stunning finish. Anthony Armstrong in that deep line playmaker role, he slipped him in, and he made absolutely no mistakes with the finish. Did McDade, and we're two 0 up. And I mean I know it's a different team to the one that played against uh, against Berlin and Malat. It's a cracking ball, isn't it? McDade, the goalkeeper's in no man's land. And that's a really, really good finish. All right, we'll give him some more praise. And as long as we defend properly here, you'd like to... Is that Callum Chambers? It can't be Callum Chambers, can it? Um, First half stoppage time. What we don't want to do, of course, is let them back in the game. But McDade is in, and McDade is the offside. Oh... I wouldn't mind a second look at that. It looked... Well, it looked very close, didn't it? It is offside. But will we get a look at exactly how close it was? It can only be fractions. Oh, no. He's, he's been a little bit lazy there, hasn't he? He's just never got back. Is that Callum Chambers? I've missed that. He, I think it is Callum Chambers. Wasn't he in their team for the first leg? Callum, come and join us, mate. Going back to Britain. Uh, what do we want to say to that? Finger pointing. Don't get complacent. Uh, we'll pump our fists. Say we have faith in you. And get back out there. McCulloch's just going through a little bit of a phase of not being particularly good. Um, is it Callum Chambers? We'll have to click on it, will we? It is Callum Chambers. Well, there we go. Uh, 33. Never mind. You can stay where you are. I want to see if this guy was Australian too. It is him. 69 caps, 6 goals. It's only just breaking into the side in real life. Not that, I mean, to be honest, the Socceroos haven't played, it seems like, in 6 years. But uh, obviously hasn't been quite that long. But he was just on the fringes of the squad, I think. Not that you guys care, unless you're Australian. Who cares? <laughs> no one even knows who the Socceroos are. But yeah, he was just breaking into the squad before the pandemic thing hit. So, um, hopefully for... Australia's sake, he turns into a very good player for us at international level because we don't have many of them these days. McDade, good pressure. Hull wins the ball back. Here we go with Napoleon looking for McDade. McGreevy picks up a loose ball, but it's won back by the Poles. And here we go again. Hull, can he win at Bow? It's a stunning tackle from Luca Hull. He had a bit of a down of spell, didn't he, last season? But the injury to Lions, we really did need him to step up, and he's showing signs he's going to do that. King has the ball here. Can we get a third goal that would surely wrap it up for us? Rory King to Fitzpatrick. Can, oh, I thought he could slip a pass in. Armstrong gets forward. Armstrong with some space. And Armstrong will not want to see that back, will he? Napoleon not having a good game in that number 10 role. I wonder... You know what we might even do against Gank, given that... Unless we get absolutely smashed in that game. Was it 2-1? We beat them at, at uh, Windsor Park earlier. I think it was 2-1. So unless... They do better than that. We might try a flat three in midfield. McDade has won it back. McDade goes himself, but can't beat the goalkeeper. Um, yeah, I wonder if we try a flat three in midfield. I wonder if we could even try it for the last little bit here. And see, I wonder if in Europe, maybe this is something we could look to do. Um, let's maybe try switching those two around. The only issue I have with that is, will it leave the striker a little bit isolated? Um, one way around this, or around having them isolate, good block by Luca Hall again. Um, I found, it's, yeah, sometimes playing a deep lying forward can be useful. The problem we will have with that, maybe Sean Simpson could play as a deep lying forward, actually. But whether just having the players that are able to do that and do it well. Fitzpatrick, a little bit of space. McDade's in front of him. Fitzpatrick goes himself. Big Dave was just sort of running a American football block, wasn't he? He wasn't really... He was just sort of in his way more than anything. Napoleon with a free kick. It's into a good area. It's headed away, Fitzpatrick! Oh, just over the bar. It was an awkward one too, an awkward height for him. Just couldn't quite keep it down. But a really, really good performance. I think it just about makes up for Bellina Millard. It's unfortunate that we don't get any points in the league for that, but that's been a relatively good performance. And the two worst performers, in, in arguably... Napoleon and Armstrong, who are probably our two best players. Um, 
what do we want to say? Yeah, well done, boys. Just a well done. So there we go. Genk did get the win in Macedonia. That's not to be unexpected, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, but we're, two of us have run away with the group, and we'll play off uh, next episode to see who it is that tops it. But more money in the bank. Armstrong is looking a little tired, so maybe that could explain his uh, maybe subpar performance from us. Um, but looking at the finances, I'm wondering, with knowing that we're through the group, if we do actually ask the board about um, facilities. They do need to be improved. And, well, they won't do it at the end of the season. I'll wait till the end of the season to ask. But, guys, that'll do it for today. If you have enjoyed that, a very disappointing league performance, a very good European performance, and hopefully a star of the future is signed for us as well. That signing, by the way, will go through in January, obviously, November 23rd, outside the window. We can't get him just yet. But we'll be back next time for Glenn Torin in the league, who are fourth, and showing signs of being a decent side again, ahead of Lahn. So that's not going to be easy. Only three points back of us. So we'll be back for that one. And then the group topping playoff. We'll go to Belgium. We'll face Genk. And we'll see if we can come away top of the group. And I don't think any of us saw that coming when this group stage started. Take care.